Okay, good morning. I have 10 o'clock. Um, this is Chair French, and I am convening the regularly scheduled business meeting for the Kansas Corporation Commission on this Thursday, June 24th, 2021. Uh, it's 10 a.m. here at the KCC's headquarters in Topeka, Kansas, and I'm joined by my colleagues, uh, Commissioner Susan Duffy here beside me and Commissioner Keene uh, remotely again uh, in, in the sunflower patch. So good to see you, Commissioner Keene. I'm glad you're able to join. On today's business meeting agenda, we have 17 consent agenda items, one noticed item, and one presentation item. We will turn first to our consent agenda. Commissioners, you've had an opportunity to review all the items on the consent agenda. And let me ask if you have any questions on those items and I will begin with Commissioner Keene. None for me, thank you. Commissioner Duffy. None for me and I move approval of the consent agenda items. We, have a, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda, uh, items on the consent agenda. Um, is there any further discussion of that motion? Sorry. I think I may have lost the video or the audio. Sorry, Dwight, we're having a bit of crosstalk here. There's been a request to pull a, uh, an item on the consent agenda. It is item number six, is that correct? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I amend my motion to include the removal of item six from the consent agenda. Second. Okay, we have an amended motion. Uh, we're taking up a new motion, amended motion to approve the consent agenda absent item number six. Is there any further discussion uh, on that motion? Hearing none, those in favor, please vote aye. 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 The consent agenda is approved, absent item number six. Now move to our noticed items. Our, our only noticed item today is in docket number 21, S and AT 423 ACQ. And this is a proposed order approving acquisition and related relief. And our presenter for this item is Mr. Michael Neely. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. On May 17th, 2021, ITC Broadband Holdings LLC, along with SNA Telephone and its parent company, US Connect Holdings, filed a joint application seeking approval for ITC Broadband to acquire US Connect and its subsidiaries, including SNA. SNA is a regulated ILEC and a long distance phone company in Kansas. The joint application also requested permission to transfer SNA Telephone's long distance certificate to SNA Communications and to have both SNA Telephone and SNA Communication convert from C Corps to LLCs. The joint application was supported by testimony from the CEO of ITC Broadband. And commission staff submitted a report and recommendation on June 18th, which is attached to the order. Staff runs through an analysis of the commission's merger standards, which are used to determine whether a proposed merger or acquisition should be approved. This entails an analysis of the financial health, ratepayer impact, managerial qualifications, and other relevant matters. Overall, staff found that the, pro the proposed acquisition was in the public interest and recommended full approval of the joint application. The order before you adopts staff's recommendation and I would recommend approval and I'd take any questions you have. Thank you, Mr. Neely. Let me turn to my fellow commissioners to see if there are any questions on this item and I will begin again with Commissioner Keene. None for me, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Duffy. I have no questions and I move approval of the order 21 uh, S and AT 423 ACQ. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the described order in this docket. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Hearing none, those in favor, please vote aye. 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 The order is approved. Thank you, Mr. Neely. 
We now move to our presentation item, and this is a legislative update to the commission. And for this, we have our legislative liaison extraordinaire, Mr. Jake Fisher. Good morning, Jake. Good morning, commissioners. How are you doing? Well, how are you? I'm doing fine. Uh, just want to start off by saying, as we're all aware, the 2021 session was uh, fairly unique in dealing with every, everything in the response to the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And uh, <clears throat> it was outstanding the work that the legislature and the legislative staff did to work through the vast number of bills that were brought up this year. And a part of the, fa uh, an interesting factor of that was you had so many bills from the 2020 session that of course they didn't carry over because it was the end of a two year cycle, but were reintroduced. And so there was just a great deal of legislation worked through this year. And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to thank the uh, KCC staff for all of the work that they did and the constant requests I felt like I was making of their time to come down and testify on multiple bills this session. And uh, I will say that, um, you know, for us, it was a very successful session. We had four pieces of legislation that we introduced, three out of those four were enacted. And so, and two of those, of course, will carry over from last year, our uh, well plugging bill, and then also our transportation cleanup bill. Uh, I will say also before I get into the meat of this that when you see in the breakdown that I provided when I say that it has no financial impact on the KCC, that simply means that if there is any work that is required by KCC staff, we can do it with our existing staff and it doesn't require us to add an FTE or doesn't require us to seek you know, an outside consultant or anything like that to, to do our part of that particular legislation. So I'll start off with uh, bills that were enacted uh, during the 2021 session that did have an impact on us. I'll start off with our sponsored bills was a uh, House Bill 2022. That was our uh, well plugging bill and also combining of the well plugging funds. And then also dealing with the uh, allowing a non responsible party to apply for reimbursement. Uh, that bill, of course, passed had no financial impact on us. The next bill was the uh, electric transmission lines associated with renewable energy generating resources. Uh, we asked that those be included in the KCC's electric power line safety oversight. Uh, the bill would benefit the safety of the public by allowing enforcement of the uh, National Electric Safety Code standards for generator tie lines. Again, that bill had no fi uh, financial impact or fiscal impact on our agency. The last one of our bills was uh, originally introduced as House Bill 2007. That later became the budget bill for the legislature. And so it uh, finally turned out to be House substitute for Senate Bill 26. And all the uh, Senate Bill 26 did was update the regulatory authority of our uh, regular re our statutes regarding motor carriers. And essentially the bill just was a cleanup bill. It removed outdated language and some of the statutes that were still remnants from before the motor carrier industry was uh, deregulated. And again, that had no fiscal impact. Moving on to uh, bills that did have an impact on us, of course, that were not our bills, was uh, originally Senate Bill 245, came out as substitute for House Bill 2072. That was uh, the securitization bill. And on that, uh, staff did file testimony on that, and you know, we took a neutral position. And there would be costs associated with that for the outside consulting and legal fees. But on that situation, of course, that would then be turned around and billed back to the utility in question. And staff estimated that this bill is something that could be used. And now we know, of course, after it's been enacted, that there is a discussion that it may be used uh, maybe even sooner than anybody uh, planned. But we would think there'd be no more than two or three cases over a five to 10 year period. The next bill is uh, House Bill 2321. Uh, that is the uh, urban transmission line bill that has been around for uh, several sessions and uh, that bill required and it, they, there was a lot of, of course, negotiations on this bill to end up with what was finally enacted. And that would just deal with a city with a population of at least 300,000 and a proposed length of, a, of an urban transmission line of at least two and a half miles uh, of at least 69 but less than 230 kilovolts of electricity. Uh, staff again filed neutral testimony on this bill. The bill, the interesting parts of the bill is that it would require that an open house be held within that city and that it be attended by at least one KCC commissioner and one member of staff. 
And of course, any cost of this bill will be rolled into. Jake, that. quick question on yes. that one. Uh, if you know, I, I know there was discussion that that 300,000 person limit, that likely means that this only applies to Wichita. Is that, was that your understanding as yes, well? Yes, that is my understanding as well. Thank you. Yes. Um, if, are there any other questions? And at the same time, please interrupt me at any time. I can talk for hours. <laughs> it comes with the profession. Uh, so moving on, House Bill 2145, that was the EV charging station bill. And uh, we were, a pro uh, staff was a proponent of this bill as that would uh, protect developing um, competitive market by ensuring that public utilities under the jurisdiction of the KCC uh, would not use its monopoly power to create an unfair advantage. And again, that bill had no fiscal impact on our agency. So now I'm moving on to a laundry list of approximately 17 bills that, of course, since this was the end of a first year of a two year cycle, these are bills that are still out there, would not have to be reintroduced. And I believe that some of them will move forward in the 2022 session. Others may not. But uh, just to be upfront and honest, I left my crystal ball upstairs, so I'm not here to uh, be the swami and make predictions as to where any of these bills will go or may go. The first one I'll start with under uh, bills that fall under utilities is our uh, fourth bill that I referenced earlier that was not enacted this year. And that was our bill that would amend the existing law authoring us to, authorizing the KCC to adopt rules and regs to align with the state jurisdiction uh, with uh, regarding FEMSA over interstate natural gas pipelines. Uh, initially, that bill uh, there were some issues downtown because of section two, because we were uh, raising the penalties that went along with that. And as you commissioners are aware, the reason was the last time those penalties were increased, I believe was 2012. So it'd been a while, but when trying to raise those after nine years of consistent uh, increases by FEMSA, it was a big increase. And for some folks, it was uh, a bridge too far. So what we had done is after consulting with staff and discussing this here in house, we decided to uh, go on ahead and uh, let the legislature know that we were not opposed if they decided to make an amendment on that bill, which was done. It was then passed out of house utilities, passed on the house floor and was assigned to Senate utilities when the session ended. Sorry, Jake. Uh, this is Dwight. Uh, I, I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage remotely this morning, but uh, what, what, what in essence was the change made by the House? The change, uh, Commissioner, was Section 2 of the bill that dealt with the increase in penalties was removed. Was removed. Okay. Was removed. The increase, I should say. So the penalties that are currently in place in statute are still in place. In the bill, we were asking for an increase to raise those to what the current uh, amounts are as uh, set by FEMSA. And so well, that, that was sorry. removed. Pardon my talking over you. Uh, uh, so basically, the matter is now uh, uh, carried forward in Senate utilities. That is correct. And it would be carried forward with section two removed. Thank you. If I could, uh, it's my understanding too that um, the action of the house um, would also preclude us um, in terms of uh, receiving some additional federal funds in that we are not adopting uh, the entire FEMSA uh, rework and uh, the, the lower um, fine amounts would result in us losing not substantial money, but some monies from the feds. That is correct. It, there is some money lost, but it is a small amount. Smaller right. amount. Right. Smaller amount, yeah. yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. All right. Um, moving on then to uh, Senate Bill 80. And so if, if I could. Oh. So where it says the current version of this bill would have no fiscal impact, I would almost think we would want to change that to say that we would receive less federal funds under the House version than we would have if we if the House had adopted the full amount. And and that would just be my comment because there is a fiscal impact and that does fund our pipeline safety um, group um, 
And I think that should be noted and even state the dollar amount so it's clear. Absolutely, Commissioner. If you would like to know the exact dollar amount, I can circle back with you. I think I have it upstairs. Okay. So, okay. so yeah, I, I guess I was looking at it from the standpoint that enactment of the bill would not cost us any money from the staffing standpoint, but you are correct. There are We are leaving money on the table. Uh, there would be a loss of revenue. Yeah. Right. Or revenue not received. I, I, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. Right. Yeah, I, exactly right. There is money that we could be getting had we adopted Section 2 with those increase in the penalties. Yes. Right. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Uh, moving on to Senate Bill 80 and House Bill 2180. Uh, those were companion bills introduced. Uh, those bills would require changes to the electric rates for transmission costs to be approved through an, a, an electric utilities general rate case proceedings. A hearing was held on the House side and at that time staff filed neutral testimony and uh, the bill would have no uh, fiscal impact on us. And then Senate Bill 81, House Bill 2181, also companion bills filed in both chambers. Uh, th those bills would require the KCC to provide the legislature with an annual report of the electric rates of electric public utilities in the region. After that bill was filed, uh, or bills were filed, I should say, a stakeholder meeting took place in March. An agreement was reached among the parties uh, where staff uh, would uh, provide a regional electric rate comparison to the Senate Utilities Commission each session. And based on that agreement, uh, I do not anticipate either one of these bills moving forward, at least, of course, not in their current form. And uh, moving on then to Senate Bill uh, 117, that would enact the Kansas Electric Bill Reduction Bonds Act and authorize the KCC to issue uh, securitized rate-backed Kibra bonds for electric utility uh, property. Staff estimated on this for a fiscal note of expenditures of approximately $500,000 per case for outside consulting and legal fees, which would be necessary to review an application to meet the statutory standards set out in the bill if it were to move forward. And Jake, that is that is another securitization bill, correct? So we would yes. not expect to see that since we had a bill passed, right? Correct. Would not, but I, I erred on the side of caution, and you'll see that again in the uh, next bill that I have on the list, just because I look at it from the standpoint is it- It's alive. It, it's still alive yep. technically, but yep. yes, you are correct, Commissioner, in that it will most likely not go anywhere. And then that leads us right into Senate Bill 133, which was the uh, Senate version of the EV charging station bill. Um, and of course, the uh, House version was the one that was uh, enacted and signed into law. Moving on to Senate Bill 279, that bill would create the Wind Generation Permit and Property Protection Act. And the bill would, it sets out some pretty stringent guidelines because the bill would prohibit construction of the wind turbine facility uh, until the developer enters into a facility agreement with the landowner that demonstrates that the developer has complied with the requirements specified in the bill. And the bill establishes minimum setback distances for wind turbines and also requires the Board of County Commissioners in each county to approve, to approve an application for construction of the facility. Uh, this was a bill that was introduced later in the session, got a lot of attention, uh, testimony was held over two days time, and as you can see, generated a total, which shocked me, I didn't realize it was that many until I went back and looked, a testimony, uh, most of it written, of course, but from 128 different groups and individuals. Uh, the committee took no action on this bill, and from our perspective here at the commission, it would have no finance, uh, fiscal impact on us. Uh, next bill we have top of page four is House Bill 2291. That would amend the net metering, net, net metering, if I can talk, and Easy Connection Act by applying it to electric cooperatives and municipal utilities and would increase the system-wide capacity limit of net metered facilities. Uh, this bill, there was no hearing held on it, and if it were to move forward, it would have no fiscal impact on us. Next bill is House Bill 2320. Uh, this bill would create the Commercial Property Assessed Clean Energy Act, or CPACE Act, which provides financing for certain energy, water, air, health, and renewable energy efficiency improvements through assessment uh, contracts between CPACE lenders and property owners. Uh, again, this bill did not have a hearing in uh, the 21 session, and if it were to move forward, it would have no fiscal impact on us. Uh, the next bill is House Bill 2330. Uh, the bill would amend existing law concerning electric public utilities authorize uh, certain sales of electric power 
pursuant to purchase agreements and such and exempt such sales from RESA and certain renewable energy suppliers from public utility reg regulation. The bill, the bill would amend the definition of a uh, customer generator as used in the Net Metering and Easy Connection Act to include a person that contracts with an owner or operator under the provisions of the bill. The bill was set for a hearing last session, but the hearing was then later canceled and never took place. And once again, this bill would have no fiscal impact on us. Then moving on to uh, a bill that got a lot of attention, at least here in our uh, building, was House Bill 2381. That was the bill that was uh, brought forward in the House to establish the State Energy Plan Task Force. And we will require the task force to submit a comprehensive state energy plan and recommendations to the governor, the legislature, uh, the House Energy and Senate Energy Committees. The State Energy Division of the KCC would be uh, responsible for providing administrative assistance to uh, facilitate the organization and meetings of the task force. Uh, just to let the commissioners know, uh, staff did not file any testimony on that. And essentially our reason came down to the fact that we were uh, created and put in this in such an integral part, we thought it might be inappropriate for us to file testimony on it. But we did of course work with uh, the house in answering their questions. And um, the bill was heard in house utilities and passed out of the committee as amended, but was not placed on general orders prior to the March 5th deadline. Uh, but just for a little bit from our perspective, the bill would uh, have an impact on us to the tune of approximately uh, $220,000. Uh, of that, $50,000 would be uh, spent uh, from federal funds for a, a one full uh, time uh, position to provide the administrative support required in the bill. And then because of the uh, diverse backgrounds, of everybody that was going to be placed on this task force, we felt that it would be best uh, to have a trained meeting facilitator involved. And for that, we thought that that number could be as high as 120,000 for that. And then we figured also another 50,000 for just research, data, information, consulting. And then, uh, of course, the cost of this would have then been put forward and, and assessed on the utilities. There are no questions. Uh, moving on to the administrative bills, that would be uh, top of page five, uh, Senate Bill 34. The bill would amend uh, all rules and regs adopted by state agency in existence on July 1. Of, and of course, at this time, it said July 1, 2021, which if this bill were to move forward, I would expect that amendment to be made to change that. It would expire five years after that date. In addition, any new rule or regulation uh, or substantial amendment of an existing rule would expire on July 1st of the fifth year after the enactment, unless the legislature takes action to renew the rule or reg. There was a hearing on this bill, but it was not passed out of Senate, Fed, and State Committee. Uh, the fiscal note on this bill, because we've seen this bill before, it was introduced previously. Uh, we had figured here uh, amongst staff to be about one and a half FTEs because of the additional staff time that's going to be necessary because we're going to be in a constant mode every year of reviewing rules and regs and then i'm going to be asking even more of staff's time for testimony on these moving forward on senate bill 134 that bill will require each uh, agency to draft and implement a staffing plan that will provide for adequate appropriate and high quality delivery of public services promote public safety and allow for the safe operations of each state agency or facility and, provi and provides necessary staff resources to respond to emergency situations. Uh, that bill did not receive a hearing last session and if it were to move forward, would have no fiscal impact on us. Uh, the next bill is House Bill uh, 2087, would amend several statutes again concerning rules and regs and the review process by the uh, Director of Budget. Um, and as I'm sure you're all aware, I believe it was the 2018 session when the rules and regs process was changed to add uh, more to the process. And so this is um, essentially is backing off some of that because it would change the review process of the director of budget by removing the requirement that the director make an independent determination of the amount of implementation, implementation and compliance cost. It removes uh, provisions requiring the director to prove all rules and regs and it no longer requires the director to review or approve rules and regs if the submitting agency determined that it will not result in costs of more than that $3 million threshold over two years time. And another interesting uh, part, which 
of course we deal with on a regular basis is that in the event a state agency was proposing a rule or reg because of a federal mandate, the state agency would not be required to provide an economic impact statement, but the director uh, or say, I'm sorry, the agency would be required to provide an economic impact statement, but the director would not be required to review or approve of the proposed rule reg, uh, regardless of the cost. Uh, for rules and regs proposed uh, due to a federal mandate, the compliance cost would be calculated from the effective date that the rule went into place. Uh, this bill was passed out of the House and was on the Senate general orders uh, when the bill ended. So I think that uh, based on that, there, uh, that bill will most likely move forward next year, and of course, would have no fiscal impact on us. The pendulum swings back, I mean, in the and, and, and it had, in, 80s. Yeah, and it has sharp edges as well. Yeah. This all was put into place. Uh, then on the top of page six, uh, there's one conservation bill that we're keeping an eye on. Uh, the bill would require KDHE to assess a carbon content charge to each distributor in Kansas. Uh, the bill would define a distributor to mean any person or entity that imports fuel for use, distribu distribution, or sale within the state or produces, refines, manufactures, or compounds fuels within the state for use, distribution, or sale. And fuel is broke down to mean any uh, former grade of butane, coal, clear diesel fuel, fuel oil, kerosene, natural gas, and propane, propane but does not include gasoline, dyed diesel fuel, or jet fuel. Uh, this bill did not have a hearing last session, and if it were to move forward, it would have no fiscal impact on us. Then moving to our last section is uh, IT bills. Uh, Senate Bill 249, would define a business risk and would modify the definition of information technology product, uh, project. The new definition would specify that an information technology project would no longer be subject to the $250,000 minimum and instead define IT project as an information technology effort of defined and limited duration that implements, affects a change in, or presents a risk to process of services security systems data, records, human resources, or architecture. Uh, the bill did not have a hearing last session. And once again, if it were to move forward, it would have no fiscal impact on us. Uh, Senate Bill 250 uh, would amend the Kansas Cybersecurity Act to require uh, security training for all state agencies and provide for certain information to be provided to the Joint Committee on Information Technology. Again, uh, same song, different verse. Uh, the bill did not receive a hearing last session. And if it were to move forward, it would have no impact on us. And the final bill is House Bill 2188. Uh, the bill would require certain state uh, IT uh, projects to be reviewed by the Joint Committee on Information Technology. Prior to any, entering into a contract, state agencies must submit information concerning a project and, uh, con and the contract to the JCIT Committee for review. And this bill again would have no fiscal impact on us. So that is a long-winded amount. I, Frank? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I can go whistle? for another 20 minutes. <laughs> well, um, thank you for the update, Jake. I mean, I'll, I'll start out just by saying I know that legislative matters are becoming a bigger and bigger part of, of what we do here. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I, I certainly welcome the, you know, the public discourse down at the legislature. I am glad to see the interest in the topics that we cover here, you know, we obviously think these are important issues, and so I'm glad to see our state's policymakers are also looking at it, but that obviously comes with um, more use of our resources um, to either testify or to just go down and advise folks and, and be there providing a conduit Im information. You're a big part of that, the biggest part of that, <laughs> um, but, you know, because I know you're down there every day during the session, um, but, you know, other folks, all the staff members that provided testimony and, you know, either went down in person to meet with legislators um, or, you know, answered emails. I know that's not infrequent. So, um, you know, I do want to thank you and, and all those folks for doing that because it is important to make sure that we're getting good information and facts out there as folks are deliberating uh, on these issues. So, thank you for that. And we'll, we'll continue to devote resources to make sure that the legislature is fully informed on all these issues. So thank you. Let me, let me turn to my fellow commissioners to see if they have any final questions or comments before we wrap up. Commissioner Keene, I will begin with you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no, no questions uh, at all. Uh, 
uh, a couple of comments, very brief. I'd uh, certainly uh, <clears throat> uh, subscribe to all of the observations that the chair just made. Add a couple of uh, minor changes to that. Uh, as you indicated uh, at the outset of your presentation, Jake, it was a busy year. Um, I'm, I'm guesstimating next year may be every bit as busy with new bills introduced beyond the potpourri that you've discussed this morning. And uh, as a result, uh, you're going to be busy again, I think. I want to thank you for your stewardship of these bills. Uh, this, this process that we're going through this morning is so incredibly helpful <clears throat> to me and I think to my fellow commissioners, because as we go through the legislative uh, 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 session, uh, we're kept apprised of the status of these bills, but there can be so many bills and then our attention is somewhat diverted to other things as well. And uh, to have a recap of this that sets out exactly what it is that's passed, what, what, what is to become effective or is effective, and what we are looking at prospectively that carries forward. This is so incredibly helpful to, to us. I thank you for doing it. You've done a marvelous job of uh, presenting this uh, again. Uh, my thanks to you for all your stewardship during the legislative session. <clears throat> uh, I would also uh, commend uh, Lynn, and then Lynn, Lynn Retz, our executive director. She also spends a fair amount of her time during the session uh, helping to keep us apprised of uh, legislation. And of course, to our staff, uh, from the division uh, directors on down, who have spent a lot of time uh, contemplating the consequences of the various legislative uh, proposals that are there and formulating the commission's response. This is all incredibly helpful. That was way too verbose. My apologies for that, but uh, nevertheless, I am uh, I'm grateful uh, very much for, for your effort and those of our staff. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Duffy, you have any comments or questions of Jake before we end? Yes, I do have a question concerning the summer activities of the legislature and that they're never gone. So, um, have they uh, determined their summer studies and are, do we figure into that? At this point, uh, Commissioner, I am not sure if those have been determined. Um, I know that I am constantly checking the calendar to see what committees might be meeting. I know that there's one right now dealing with unemployment that started meeting at nine o'clock. I know that the State Finance Council meets today at two o'clock and I will be listening into that. Um, but I would be happy to double check and see exactly what has been released for the schedule and be happy to get that information to you. Good. I think that's important. And yeah, the Finance Council, I think they do have a limited number of, of things they're going to be looking at this summer where they're um, actually paying for and providing for the, some legislators to come back in. If I could, just for a moment, I would like to um, just briefly on House Bill 2022. Um, I do think um, related to abandoned well plugging, I, I recall back in 1985 when the original legislation was passed and it did demarcate between bills abandoned before 1985 and those after. The amount of work that went in to get that piece of legislation primarily um, it was driven by the majors, uh, oil companies that were here, but it was a delicate balance of getting true agreement on a problem that was um, huge and being um, tackled only a little bit. Um, as a result, over 5,000 wells have been plugged. We know we've got about that many left that we've identified. And we still continue to find upwards of, I believe about 300 wells a year um, that were not on our list before. It is and continues to be an issue. I do believe the amendments um, provided in House Bill 2022 will uh, jumpstart again the process for plugging these abandoned and orphaned wells. And um, I think this is a good reflection of using resources um, that we have available to this problem. And it is a problem. 
and um, the industry is paying for the problem. And I think we're using the money wisely. Also, I think the addition of our well plugging coordinators in every district will and is making a huge difference as we've already encumbered a bunch of money for next year's um, that starts July 1. So I thought that was huge that that finally got passed. House Bill 2367, this is all about safety. And here we are kind of coming in after the fact of, a, of a, um, a, an accident. But I think our staff was very clear that something needed to be done. And I appreciate that the task is now completed and that everybody is working together. And although the, the industry said, well, if you would have just called us, no, I, it needs to be on the books and it needs to be real. So I'm, I'm so, um, I'm glad that this one made it over the finish line. Uh, same with Senate Bill 26. We take for granted on the transportation that these things are going to get done and passed. But this one was another Herculean effort to get it over the finish line. And mainly because of the gamesmanship, <laughs> that's I think the word to use, that goes on to um, using certain bills for other purposes. So um, my um, hat is off to staff for continuing to identify things that we need to do. Finally, House Bill 2321, that affects Wichita directly. As I have said, I toured back in November of 2019 and actually visited with a resident who was in tears when he told me he felt guilty. He had accepted payment for something for which he did not really understand. My heart was broken over that. And um, it, it did mar a neighborhood that already has issues. So um, I think this was definitely a good move. I would also like to say that um, this year, I believe that our staff went to the Capitol to testify in person um, many times um, at their own risk, um, taking safety precautions, but still when they felt it was absolutely necessary. Lynn and you, Jake, sat in the audience a lot and you were physically there because that was needed. Um, so I want to thank you for doing that. I also believe our staff rose to the technological challenge of testifying long distance and doing it well. Um, I can remember uh, Justin saying, hey, I'm gonna have to turn off my picture to ensure you, you hear me. And um, I give kudos to the legislative staff for finally getting it to where it was working well. I think it's a tremendous tool, the Zoom is. I was able at my leisure at 1030 at night to go in and look to see what happened and really understand the nuances of legislation that affect this agency. I hope they continue that um, Zoom capability. I think it's very effective. And I think in terms of transparency for the Kansas citizens who are interested in these issues, it's important. With that, Mr. Chairman, um, I, I do wanna just uh, applaud staff on another heroic effort during the legislative session. Absolutely, and I <clears throat> concur with all of that. And, and Dwight mentioned Lynn and I realized I <laughs> had not specifically said her name. And so I, I think all the commissioners wanna specifically call out the hard work that Lynn Retz did uh, with, along with Jake in tracking everything and keeping us aware. I mean, it, it was a lot this year and, you know, on top of a lot of other challenges that, that weren't normal. Um, and so we appreciate that very much. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, as you said, uh, without Lynn, I could not even do my job. And it's truly <laughs> in the world we live in now, it is an absolutely a two person job 
to stay on top of everything. But I will say that uh, if we're looking for a silver lining out of the dark cloud that was COVID, it is the fact that with the technology updates that have been done downtown, it makes it so much easier now. You're not just saddled with just a, an audio recording of a committee because you know many times we're double booked. Mm -hmm. And so it is... It, it was an incredible effort that the legislature undertook to get that done in such a quick amount or such a short amount of time to be able to execute that and for it to work as well as it did overall. It was amazing and it was very helpful for us. too. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. And if there is no further business to come before us this morning, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. A motion and a second to adjourn. Those in favor, please vote aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.